Yo, what's up guys? Maddie here. Oh my god, it has been so long since I've made a video. I thought I'd come back. It's 2024, it's a new time to make content, and I have so much to share. I'm getting into so many rabbit holes. We're gonna start with Immutable X. IMX Immutable, you guys have heard the name. Some of you guys have invested. Some of you guys don't know what the heck it is. But today, IMX is one of the top coins in all of crypto, top 25. So I'm gonna break down some of the top games developing on the system, um, on their platform, and I've, I've made a Twitter thread on that at DC at DCL Blogger on Twitter. Follow me there if you haven't. And uh, we're just gonna go through all of these games and go through the whole ecosystem. I'm very bullish on Immutable. I think they're gonna be such top performer. If you think blockchain gaming is gonna be big, these guys have been building for that very moment for seven years plus since I've gotten here. Before I even gotten here. So I'm gonna go through a lot of them. So let's start with what Immutable is. Immutable are a ZK rollup solution for um, layer two scaling on Ethereum specifically. So they started off back in the day as Fuel Games, a game studio that wanted to build games on Ethereum or blockchain. And I remember, I remember when I first started, Etherbots popped up and it was sort of like this bot battling game where you can buy these um, uh, boxes and you get parts and you combine those parts and you battle those um, robots that you can combine with those parts. And it was a thing, right? And and this, believe it or not, this was a pretty good looking um, polished game back then. This was like six years ago when the NFT games were like Telegram bots. So we were like, whoa, wait a second, people can have websites and you can battle on chain in this method. We thought it was like a cool thing. So they sold a bunch of NFTs and they did pretty good, they did okay. And then they quickly um, raised some funds and went bigger. And that's when they built Gods Unchained. Gods Unchained was like a TCG game, a uh, trading card game that sort of emulated Hearthstone. So if you played Blizzard's Hearthstone, then this would have been very familiar to you. And um, it was this was way more polished. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. This is super cool. And then they had an open sort of pack sale for like a year straight. And uh, there's actually videos of me opening those packs. And we'll go through Gods Unchained later. And then they realized when they, they opened up their marketplace that there were some really big issues in um, trading items. Like people would not trade cards and people would not pay you know, $3 gas fees to trade a $2 card. So they realized that there was a big issue there. there and that's when they were like, wait a second, we need to make an, an, a, a roll-up solution, an Ethereum layer 2 solution for our games, but also the whole cryptoverse that are also gonna have this uh, this issue. So that was very, very early. So their very early thinking was Web3 scaling in Web3 gaming scaling in this space. And that's what Immutable is today. And so we had Immutable, they've done like a crap ton of partnerships with pretty much everyone in the ecosystem of crypto that will have anything to do with blockchain gaming metaverse or whatever. And um I'm only gonna cover like a very small section of this because obviously I can't um, cover everything. But uh, yeah, that's what Immutable are today. So right now they are top 25, number 24. They've gone up quite a lot over the last month. So we're gonna go through why they are here and some of the games developing on their platform. But again, I did a Twitter thread uh, probably, I don't know, it was yesterday. I did a Twitter thread yesterday and um, let's go through it. So. A game, so some of the stats, $4.7 billion in uh, uh, market cap, uh, top 25, number 24 right now, seven plus years of building, and I'm a big fan of games or platforms that I've been building for a long duration of time. So that shows resilience, that shows a lot of patience, it shows that they, they know how to, how to navigate bear and bull cycles, which is very important for crypto games. It shows they're legit, uh, 150 plus games, 1 billion plus e dollar ecosystem fund, um, if blockchain game is the narrative, and I think it is the narrative in blockchain if when the bull cycle comes, <clears throat> then that's why I think Immutable X, IMX is going to do really, really well because they've been positioning themselves as an infrastructure play for this exact moment. And, you know, again, when you look at coin market cap, you can see that there are different platforms here that are above them, like you know, Polygon, you've got, um, you've got Avalanche. And yes, these guys do things with blockchain gaming, but there is no specific only blockchain gaming targeted project in the top 25. And that's why I think they sort of uh, are separate in that category. So 
So let's go through some of the games building on the platform. So Illuvium is one. Illuvium popped up as one of the really good, high quality games very, very early. I think it was like four years ago. Again, this is in no particular order. So you guys know how I said, like, I'm a big fan of games that I've been building for a long while. So again, Illuvium are one of those. They're sitting at $600 million market cap, pretty much. And that's crazy because we haven't even started the bull market. I mean, if you look at what that means on the chart, that's still pretty low. Wait, you guys can't see this. Let me turn myself up here. Oh, maybe over here. Um, that's still pretty damn low, right? Like, look at this. $100 at a time. There were $1,800 US dollars. And if I look at the market cap, then, uh, yeah, you know, the market cap has caught up. So the dilution of the token has, has affected that price. But I still think they've got a way to go because... They're still strong in the development. They've been around for ages and everyone remembers this video that came up. Uh, you guys can't hear that, I don't think. But I remember looking at this and being like, whoa, this is like super high quality. And it was one of those rare, it was one of those pivotal moments for blockchain gaming where we realized that you can make higher quality games than the games that were there at the time. So there were some projects that came out that sort of were like, whoa, you can do that with blockchain gaming. I feel like Illuvium was one of those at the time. So yeah, um, pretty important project. I am watching it. <clears throat> this is in no particular order, guys. So I've got a bunch of really good games here. I don't, I'm not ranking these. I'm just going through these. Pixelmon, Pixelmon um, actually caught a lot of flack when they first announced uh, the project and they first revealed their NFTs. They actually were one of the projects that raised like 60 to $70 million off their NFT pre-sale. It was a reverse Dutch auction, if I can remember correctly. And then the Mons uh, were revealed and they were like pixelated and people really didn't like the aesthetic. And then the, the IP was sold to a studio called LiquidX. And LiquidX came across and they said, you know what, we're going to build games. We are a studio and they are building what they're calling a decentralized IP. So this is one of the games that they're building. I think you would see, you're seeing, you're going to see Pixelmon in different platforms, whether it be mobile, desktop, whether it be... Um, Roblox, Fortnite, whatever it is, I think that's what they mean by decentralized IP. And they're building not only Pixelmon, but a couple of other cool things under that. I think they're going to be massive. They are releasing a token as well. Um, so we got, they're releasing Mon token very soon. In fact, they just released their community pre-sale details. So read this when you want. Uh, I think you get an allocation or you get whitelisted to have an allocation if you have a Pixelmon itself and their Pixelmon NFTs are all doing pretty damn well. 1.7 ETH floor again in a bear market. And it's been, you know, ap uh, apart from the first dip when they first reveal, revealed, they've been pretty doing quite well ever since then all through the bear market. You know, this was the bear market right here and they've been going up pretty much the whole time. So I think that has a lot to do with the direction they're going in. So I'm bullish on the Pixelmon ecosystem all up. Uh, obviously, disclaimer, I, my fund invested in Pixelmon pre-seed token launch, and we also invest in IMX. Much of these projects I've actually invested in. Again, a big supporter of IMX ecosystem. And then what's next on the list? The next on the list, we've got New Ganymede. New Ganymede is our own project. So my company, Medikey, is building New Ganymede. It's an open MMO action RPG. We are so excited about New Ganymede. I think it's one of the most finest looking gameplays that you can get. Uh, you're going to be able to quest. We're going to have some collaborations in here. Uh, we're still doing some testing. We will launch it soon. And uh, keep an eye out for New Ganymede. I, on this YouTube channel and on Twitter, will be discussing more about how we are uh, releasing this and what you guys can do, whether you have an NFT, the meta key, whether you have participated in the, the, the game item presale on New Ganymede, or whether you are just a free person that have nothing to do with our ecosystem. I will be sharing how you guys can get involved. Again, we're building on the immutable ecosystem as well. Um, then there is this Infinity Victory, which popped up on my radar recently. Uh, it's made by Bitfry Games, and it looks like a crazy action, sort of over-the-top basketball game. You can um, turn into aeroplanes, you can fly and dunk stuff. So this is super interesting. I don't know how it will go when it comes to gameplay, but hey, I'll check it out. I'll play it a little bit on my YouTube. I think I'll start streaming video games. Um, you can make a whole bunch of money just stream, uh, not streaming, but making games this season, I think. Because companies will pay for engagement by airdropping you tokens. So I think there's a really big narrative in just playing games and making money this, this year and next year. Next one on the list is Habbo Hotel. Now Habbo Hotel is an OG. These guys are a 2D open world that have been around since 2002, I think. 
Um, still today, there are 500,000 active users worldwide and you can buy their avatars. So they've got a separate server for NFT related things, NFT collections, NFT items, NFT collectibles. And um, it's pretty cool. You can um, utilize the NFTs across here. Medikey, my company has a collaboration with these guys where you were airdropped Medikey items and you can display them as Fernie on your uh, in your room. So that's pretty cool. Great guys to work with. Um, another thing I was going to say is they have uh, not many people know this, but you can actually if you hold avatars, their avatars, you get points every day. You can cash those points that you earn every day. You earn like 10 points per avatar a day. You can cash those points in for tokens or credits. And then people, those credits are NFTs on the IMX blockchain and you can trade those NFTs. And there's actually a market for it. You can see people buy and sell, uh, sell there. So they, they've gotten, you know, 100 of these. They sell, sold it for 0 0.001. They've got 1,000 here. So these guys sold it for 0 0.01. So you can imagine if you have three avatars, you pretty much get about 1,000 a month in points. You can cash that in for a 1,000 uh, credit token. That's 0 0.01 ETH. So 0 0.01 ETH, I think, is about 25 US dollars you're making per month if you have three of those avatars. So it's an interesting, not many people know this. I didn't even know this. And I had have had Abba Hotel avatars for like two years. I sort of known it, but I forgot about it. But like I was recently um, reintroduced to it. And it turns out that I had like thousands of dollars worth of this. So Worth pointing out, there are a very interesting projects to get into. Again, they are on the IMX blockchain. What's next? You got Gods Unchained. We did a little bit of a history lesson on Gods Unchained. Um, again, these guys have been around for ages. You guys know a bit of the backstory here. They are a Hearthstone competitor, you can say, with NFTs. I personally think when it comes to trading card games, NFTs are perfect because trading card game, what do you do? You play games, you, you verse each other. But you also trade the card. There is rarity, scarcity. There's all sorts of mechanics that fit perfectly with trading NFTs. So I'm a big, uh, I, I think that's going to be a pretty big deal, whether it be Gods Unchained that figure it out or some other project. But I do think TCG and NFTs fit very well. These guys are sitting pretty strong at around 80, oh, $76 million market cap. So it's dropped a little bit since I last mentioned it on my Twitter. But hey, that's pretty damn healthy. So, right. Um, and the game is still pretty, pretty cool. Then you've got uh, Guild of Guardians, which is a mobile RPG. Um, I used an old video, so it seems like they have changed their, their gameplay style. So let's open their new video, which I think I did. I did I put it. Here we go. It's right here. So it's, um, I believe this is going to be on mobile. And uh, you can buy heroes, which are again, NFTs on the IMX blockchain. You can put them through quests and compete these sort of dungeon crawler style quests and earn sort of uh, points and get rewarded. Uh, again, one of those, anything that comes out of Immutable. So Guild of Guardians and Gods Unchained are made by Immutable themselves. They make some games and then they also help other games to develop on their blockchain. Guild of Guardians is one of those games. I think they've only got two games, Gods Unchained and Guild of Guardians. That is on the IMX blockchain, um, made by Immutable, sorry. So that's another one I've got my eyes on. They've also got a token out there. Guild of Guardians token is currently 23 cents. We're sitting at $230 million, fully diluted, $125 million market cap, which is pretty healthy. Uh, $120 million market cap, which is pretty healthy. Looks like the market is taking a bit of a beating today. It's all good. Still going to see a bull cycle over the next few, two years, one to two years, in my opinion. All right, what else do we have? We have Storm Warfare, which is another TCG game uh, based on World War II. This one also looks pretty cool, very well polished. I don't know if it's out yet, but again, I feel like NFTs and TCG are a match that are well made. Um, yet to see one that goes super, super mainstream, but people do. I played TCGs before. Big fan of the very early Pokemon TCGs and Yu-Gi-Oh! and all that sort of stuff. So this is right up my alley. Um, take some time to learn the different cards and the strategy for each game. I don't know if I'll play them, but I will be watching them. Next is Treeverse. Treeverse, pretty bullish on this, made by Endless Clouds, which are a game studio by now. These guys are also making, them. these guys are making Treeverse. They're also making the, the game after this, which I'm going to show Capsule Heroes. It's also pretty cool. 
Uh, Treeverse uh, seems like an MMORPG. You, you walk around, um, battle monsters, um, gather runes, all that sort of stuff. You can do this with other players. These guys have two NFT collections out there. They've got Founders Plots, which are lands or homes that are suddenly that are currently sell selling for about 0.5 Ethereum. And then you've also got their avatars, both, I believe, usable in Treeverse and potentially other games that come out of Endless Clouds. It looks like they are going to be a studio that continue to make games. They're doing pretty well. Loopify is quite active on Twitter, so I have big faith on uh, Treeverse. Then you've got Capsule Heroes. That looks pretty cool. It's a 3 vs 3 brawler. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm a very competitive person, so I actually might play this uh, online. I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm, looking for, I'm looking forward to this game. So a 3 vs 3 brawler where it looks like you got to knock people off the stadium. Uh, totally up my alley. I don't know if these guys have a token coming out or anything like that. I do know that the Treeverse recently, these guys recently raised money. I don't think they said it was for a token. I have a bit, I, I feel like it could be for a token, but uh, yeah, watching these guys intently, again, both made on Immutable. Then we have Join Planet Quest. These guys don't have a token, I believe, um, but these guys are more of a cinematic sort of experience on a, you, you have control over how this experience or universe expands. There's planets, there's factions, there's all sorts of things going on in there. Interestingly, it's made by people that are ex-Hollywood that are, I believe, ex-Disney as well. Um, some of the leadership team are really high up there in the network and uh, production quality. So expecting some pretty big things from Planet Quest. I believe it has 200,000 plus explorers, i.e. users. That's a, that's a stat I've seen um, as well. Then we have Ember Sword. Ember Sword has been around for such a long time. Oh my God. I remember when I was big on Decentraland, Ember Sword was also a thing that were also looking at selling land. And I was talking to their founder on what this might look like. And since then, it looks like they have continued to build. It's an MMORPG. They don't have a token. I don't believe they have a token. I do believe they have a land set you can buy on uh, Polygon um, blockchain somewhere on OpenSea, but uh, they're one to watch. I don't know if they're publicly playable right now, but again, another pretty another game that's been building for years on Immutable. Big fan of projects that are building for years. Um, again, showing stability and progress means that you can last in this crazy volatile space. Ecomi, i.e. VV. I don't know if you say VV or VV. I'm going to say VV. VV are not a game. They're a mobile platform. The reason I put them here is because they made digital collecting mainstream uh, at they, they were a big part of that. So they brought a lot of IPs in here. So if you go to the VV website, these guys bought Superman comics, DC comics, Marvel comics, all sorts of IPs that we know to their um, app. And they sold these. And some of these were like selling north of hundreds of thousands of dollars per comic. And they have an app. The app was very seamless, very well to work with. And uh, they were responsible to bring a lot of IPs to the space. And they're um, on Immutable. So again, uh, not a game, but I thought it would be worth uh, mentioning it. The Bornless, this one I saw recently, an FPS action shooter. Um, this one just looks terrifying. Like it's, it looks like it's a horror sort of genre of an action shooter game. Uh, looks all kinds of crazy. I have not, apart from this trailer, I don't know much about it. They might release a token. I don't know, but that is one to watch. Again, pretty cool. Wild World, now... I don't know. Um, when I was looking at this, there was an article that said they are on the immutable blockchain. I don't know if they are. I had another comment that said, Maddie, these guys have since changed to their own blockchain or something. But hey, shout out to them anyway, because they're an Aussie based team. Big fan. I met the founder and they look super high quality. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen anything this high quality in the blockchain space. So they, they're building some sort of a metaverse environment, uh, social sort of play here with a, a super high quality avatar and uh, aesthetic system. Then we have World Wide Web. These guys were a bit of, these guys went pretty hard on integrations. These guys ship very, very quickly. Um, if I were to go to World Wide Web, you can see this is pretty much the gameplay. It's a pixel world. You can walk around. You can, you can sort of represent yourself as however you want. This was Jan 24, 2022. So this was like two years ago. And when they put this out, everyone was like, oh my God, you can jump in there and talk to people. You can socialize. This is the whole metaverse thing. You can use your Kong's character. You can use different avatars. And these guys were really quick to bring in as many characters as they can from like Moon Cats to um, Cool Cats to 
pretty much anything. Uh, many avatars are usable in their world and they've continued to build and raise funds. And they are also on the immutable ecosystem. There was a time when their, av their plots, their NFT plots would sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Their mansions, I remember, sold for like 80 Ethereum at one point, And that was like 200K plus, I believe, at, at that point. So a notable project to watch in the ecosystem. And I think that's it, guys. And then, yeah. Bang, the, the ecosystem is so big, it is buzzing. And I've just gone through some of these projects. Um, I think, again, this is a reason why I think when it comes to Web3 Gaming, because IMX have been around for a very long time, that they built infrastructure which other platforms need that have anything to do, to do with gaming. And because they get more stronger with each game that comes up here, because games are also going to look for communities to connect to, and the whole interoperability play where they're going to knock on other game studios and say, hey, do you want to integrate our NFTs in your game? And there's going to be something like that develop. And I think when it comes to games um, and the momentum, Immutable seems to be going that way. Now, I don't expect many of these games to do millions of users and bring in the Web2 crowds. I still think we have a long way to go to get there. But I do think that when it comes to um, gaming in general, then some of the hit games will come out of these ecosystems, specifically Immutable. Anyway, I thought I'd cover that for you guys. I was excited about it. I am invested in some of these, but uh, hey, I'll be covering way more videos in time to come. I'm going to be super active on YouTube and Twitter this year. That's something I wasn't last year and the year before. So if you have a meta key, join me on the Discord or join me on Twitter and just join me on YouTube. And I'd love to keep doing this and uh, connecting with you guys. Catch you guys in the uh, next video. Take care. Bye.